Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this beautiful evening at the Grammy Museum. And in celebration of International Women's Day and International Women's Month, let's get a round of applause for that. There cannot be any shortage of applause for all the incredible women that uh, have shared their voice here today, and we are grateful for that. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this very special panel on expression. I will welcome to the stage um, Ms. Heidi Rojas, musician, songwriter, and artist. Thank you, Heidi. Um, I will also welcome to the stage Nilla Allin, multifaceted rap artist. Thank you, Nilla. Then we also have Ms. Dayren Santa Maria, violinist and musician. Thank you, Dayren. And last but certainly not least, Miss Storm DeBarge, dancer, choreographer, and producer. Thank you all for being here um, again for this very special talk on expression. Um, without further ado, I'm going to kick things off with a question you may have heard before. Um, for all the speakers, how would you define power and what significance does it hold in your life and work? Oh, my <laughs> bad. Okay, well, I mean, in my line of work, of course, I'm a director, a choreographer, and a producer, and I do a lot of video videos and visuals, so I feel like bringing people together and having that influence on people, because it's not easy, and I think having that in influence on people makes me feel good, because I know what I'm doing, you know, so, yeah. Um, I would say my definition is just making sure that I'm always aligned with my higher self, um, especially as of recently, it's, man, it's so easy to get wrapped up in social media, um, especially in my industry, because I'm an influencer, but I'm a rapper as well. So I get a lot of comments and everything like that. And a lot of times you just have to unplug and recognize, I know my purpose. I know why I'm here. Other people may not get it, but I get it. God gets it and I'm only here to please myself. So I feel like the real true power is really aligning with who you are loving yourself, appreciating yourself, and blocking out all the other noise. Yeah. yeah. I agree, too. And um, I think it's about that, about doing what, what you like the most, about, about being able to do what you like, what you please. In my area, I, um, I feel powerful when I play my music, the music that I like, my original music, and, and I dance, and I express all of my emotions, and I feel... Uh, good about doing what I like to do and at home as well and, and taking care of my family taking care of my of my daughter and my mother as well so I feel powerful that way too yeah um hi I'm an I'm an artist and songwriter I wrote songs for other artists for quite a while and now I'm releasing music for myself and I would say <laughs> Um, f through uh, a lot of therapy, a healing journey that has been never ending, I'm sure, and, um, and motherhood. I became a mom. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old and um, at home, and motherhood completely changed me as I watched someone come outside of my body that I created. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I made eyeballs, I made all kinds of body parts, and, um, <laughs> and I was just like, I, I honestly just like, I, I came into my superpower. I realized... I am a woman, I can do anything. And um, society sh you know, tells uh, women that at a certain age, especially in the music industry, right, that, um, that we're washed up, we're irrelevant, we don't have anything to say. And so um, what really stepping into my power means for me is, is actually just going completely against that and saying, actually, I have never felt more um, empowered, I've never felt more passionate that I have something to say. And so I'm writing empowerment songs and lullabies for kids and my, my inner child, and I'm sharing them as a 37-year-old toddler mom, uh, you know, when, uh, when society and the music industry says that I, it was too late for me. And so I'm, I think empower, how I feel empowered is by just rebelling against everything anyone's ever said and just doing what feels authentic and real to me. And the rest will, like you said, been, be taken care of by God, you know? Amazing. So in times of adversity, how would you harness your, or how do you harness your inner strength and resilience during challenging moments? 
And what strategies do you employ to overcome such obstacles? I'll throw this question out. Um, <clears throat> I would say um, every time I'm faced with a challenge, I have to always remember that there's, there's a bigger picture and there's something for me to learn. Um, and I recognize that but everything is, is energy, frequency, and vibration. So the frequency of the problem is a different frequency than the solution. So if I'm stressed, if I'm anxious, if I'm letting the problem really get to me, then I'm never gonna find a solution because, again, I have to align with my higher self to find the solution to the problem. And God talks, we just have to listen. So I gotta remind myself to shut up sometimes <laughs> and listen to God. And so um, there's a lot of times that I get stressed in, in my job and I know when to put the work down and walk away because I'm not gonna find the solution with just pushing, 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 and you know, trying to make things fit and work out. I got I gotta, you know, give myself a break, put it down, relax, and once I'm feeling better, the situation starts to feel better. So I really prioritize how I feel. And I think it's easy to get so wrapped up in other things and we prioritize everything else but the but how we're feeling in the moment. So I make sure to take a step back and really prioritize, okay, let me, let me cater to Nilla and then back away, I'll, I'll you know, get back to it um, when the time is right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, I, I agree. And I, I also feel like um, whatever we're looking for, we're going to find it. And so I <laughs> sometimes, I mean, I, re I remember specifically, it was like a month into putting music out and I, I asked my husband, I was like, what am I doing? This is insane. I'm crazy. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. And um, and we were sit at dinner with my kids. They were running around. And this there were literally two other tables, because we eat so early, because we have kids. We're at like 4.30. No one else is there. And this woman came over from the other table. And she was like, hey, I just want you to know I love your music. And I follow you. And I said, tell me more, because I'm certain you think you have me confused for someone else. <laughs> and she was like, no, I remember you. And, and I was sitting at dinner just asking for a sign like is this crazy should I keep doing this and literally like 20 minutes later this sign from the universe just telling me to keep going and it I can tell you so many other stories that have happened just like that but it's not just because like good things happen because I'm looking for good things I'm sure within there were bad you know bad things like comments and all kinds of things but I'm when I'm looking for positive, I'm, I'm sending out positive and I'm asking for positive energy. The negative ones, I'm like, pow, pow, pow. And just like, just because I'm focused and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I'm looking for, um, for stuff that aligns with the positivity and the empowerment that I'm trying to put out. And so I think what, um, if we're looking for, you know, community, we're going to find community. If we're looking for people who don't understand us, we're going to find people who don't understand us. And so it's just um, putting out the energy that we want to receive back um, from the world. And I really believe that the universe has, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of negativity, but there's a lot of love. And so, um, and we deserve it. We all deserve it. So let's, um, we can find it within ourselves, but we can also trust that there are people, there's goodness out there for us too. Period. I like it. Okay, um, with me, I feel like in my line of work, it is different when I'm a dancer, but I've transitioned in being behind the camera instead of being in front of it. So I'm the person that's curating things, I'm coming up with ideas. So my head's all over the place, I'm around a thousand people a week. So I have to figure out like, okay, Storm, what are you gonna do for you? Like, you're tired. People are calling your phone. You've made commitments to other people. Your brain doesn't stop creating. So once I figure out something to do, I'm like, ooh, camera guy, yep, I wanna do this. Oh, my camera guy, yep, what are we doing? What are we doing today? Are we shooting today? And then I'm stressed out because I'm tired. Then I get home and I'm whooped and I don't know what to do. And I'm just in bed like, oh my God, I'm still sitting down, I'm laying down with my mind still racing. So I think it's important for us to take time for ourselves physically and spiritually because you know God's always gonna be there for us. So when you call out to him, he's gonna, bring back what he needs to bring back for you. But if you sit there and you just decide to keep overworking yourself, it's just, you're going to literally draw yourself bad. Like the body's gonna end up quitting on you. And I just told somebody the other day, like, I'm so tired and I feel like my body's about to quit on me right now. But I have like the biggest video to do on Sunday. So what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna answer anyone. Self care, you know, facial care, looking good, feeling good, eating something I wanna eat, my favorite drink, my favorite trip, like things like that. 
that's what helps me in those moments. But other than that, like, I think everything that happens when you have problems or struggles with in your line of work, you're supposed to. You're supposed to go through those things so you know how to figure it out the next time. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's right. Every time that we go through a difficult situation, there is something to learn from there. And um, I have gone through so many, and all of us as artists, we have gone through so many of those. Um, bad experiences, weird experiences, and um, and we just, every one of them make, make us somehow stronger, somehow. And uh, just thinking of giving up so many times, and at the end of that situation, of that issue, I come up stronger. And uh, somehow it just happens, it keeps happening like that. And um, even during COVID, I was like, okay, well, what are we doing now? Uh, what is What is gonna happen now? As musicians, we many of us, I know uh, the diversity of artists, not just musicians, but, but artists in general, is amazing. There are a, a small percentage of us who are very fortunate to have a lot of opportunities and doors opening up for them. And I'm like, okay, who's the person who's gonna open the door for me? And uh, for many of my friends that have had to move away to other cities because they were not able to make it here in Los Angeles, amazing musicians. and. Um, it doesn't happen for all of us. I mean, it doesn't happen at the same time either. But the amazing thing is that we just have to keep going, keep going and keep going. And, and during COVID, um, I was like, okay, what am I gonna do now? Should I like learn IT, take a degree on IT? And I did it, I did that. But at the same time, I, of course, I kept practicing my violin and doing my violin. I decided to be a violinist and I, since I am seven years old. So it's, it's in me. I mean, I, I was, I, I don't care what happens, what I have to do. I know that my passion is the violin and I have it with me and I can play anytime, any, you know, any moment for me, for my family and it gives me the same pleasure and satisfaction. But what am I going to do to be able to take care of my family? I have my mother and my daughter. That was before I got married and I just got married two months ago. And, but before that, thank you. <laughs> But before that, it was many years of just me trying to do things on my own, and it was very challenging and uh, scary at times, but somehow God, the universe, nature, mother nature, the sun, everyone just got together to, you know, to say, this is what you have to do. IT is not your thing, it's music, so just stay on it. Yeah. So somehow it's like that. And also, it's so important for us as women, as not just women, but every one of us has a, have a community that we can rely on, not just our friends, not just our family, but a group of artists as us, like we're doing now, but not just do it once a month or once a year, but more often, like a phone number of, of one of the many organizations that are up here everywhere that, you know, that's supposed to protect and, 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 and uh, support artists even more and uh, you know, have a phone number so that we can call and so that they can really help. You know, there are so many things that I think that could be so much easier if we have more creative people in power taking, you know, those decisions. I mean, there are so many organizations and I'm like, okay, so we don't need just money, like grants or things like that, that there's so many grants, for example, available, but there's just one given or two or three, and there's so many of us uh, that need help and I think that there are things that we can do if you're an artist. Okay, so we're gonna create these for you. We're, organizations can create environments for us to do what we have to do and then get rewarded and then take care of our families and, and be happy. I think we can do so much more because this country, um, I think has the power, financial power to do that because it has the financial power to do many other things. So it has the financial power to take care of the artists because we, in general, we are all inspired by it. We are all inspired about uh, for m music, for shows, serious dance, everything inspires us. So when I want to unwind, I just put one of my favorite series and I'm like, okay, I'm good now. So I can, I can keep taking care of everything that I have to take care of. And I have many friends that they need this song that makes them feel good to be able to move on. And we are all like that. We listen to Ella Fitzgerald. And those beautiful artists that are gone now, they went through a lot. So I think it's time for the government, for powerful organizations to, hello, take care of us too, you know, because we need that. We need that. A lot. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Storm. 
And we're going to dive into how you use your power through expressing or expressing your power through dance and movement. Okay. I feel like there's like a trickle effect. So at first, you know, I was dancing, I was young, blah, 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 blah. found love for it. And then I realized I could start making money around like 21, 22, I'm 27 now. So like 20, 21, I was like, okay, I have the power to do this. Like people love to watch me. I'm going to parties so people can record me. Like I was purposely getting cute and going out every weekend and dancing to every song. So people can be like, oh my gosh, like look at her. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna record something that you like when you see it. And then they tag you and then that person clicks on the tag and then they follow you and they're like, oh wait, you're gonna be at this party next time. Like, oh, I liked her energy. That's I wanna dance I with her. About you. you know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So boom, that happened. Then I decided like, okay, cool. I actually like to make videos with my best friend. So that's who's my videographer now. His name's Cooley, shout out to you. Um, he was like, hey, I have camera now. I wanna do this professionally, what's up? I was like, pull up, let's get the video going. So once I started posting and I started realizing that I was going viral and people were tapping in and people were following, they're like, oh my God, I watched this today, you made my day. Or, oh my God, I used to dance and now when I see you, now I wanna dance now. So I'm like, okay, so what can I do that's better than this time? So every time I'm like, I can top, I can top the video every time. So now I'm realizing I like to direct. So which came down to me choreographing Dr. J. Seawalk in the Super Bowl, which is crazy because I had the, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> which is crazy because the word power again, you know what I'm saying? I had the power to do that because I made a visual that was called Family Function that I just had like LA artists come, uh, my friends come that I grew up with and I just created a visual of dance and comedic addict to it so i just like a lot of things that my friends do if they want to act they produce they rap they're a part of this video and it just makes you feel like you're in the backyard with all your family having fun and dancing so when i did that it went viral and someone seen it but i had the power to have people come out and make it a big thing because i have like over 40 50 people there so i'm reaching out to people like hey can you come out this is this is what i believe in you know what i'm saying this is the vision i have do you believe in it as well and they're like yeah i'm down let's pull up so now i have like 13 of them I went to New York, I drove to the Bay, um, pulling out everybody and all these dance, you know, all these dance different forms of life. And it's just beautiful to see that people will pop up for me because they believe in me, you know? So that literally just happened on Sunday. Um, I had over a hundred people in one building just because me and my manager sat down and was just like, I was like, hey, this is what I wanna do. And I can do it because I know people are gonna pull up for me because they believe in me. So now I have that. Then I also have like my style of recording that I do. So when I wake up, I see people that are trying to shoot like me. Like they're, I'm like, okay, I see you. Like <laughs> you stole my whole swag, low key. Like <laughs> it's cool, but it's fine because that's what happens. I'm here for the younger generation. I'm here for the young ladies that are in South Central LA. I'm here for the inner city community. So that's what I'm here for. And that's what I want. Like yeah. we want a hundred, a hundred mini me's, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like, that's kind of what it is. It's always having to pull people together for videos and visuals and people that pull up. Like I have my friends that come to my events and things like that. So it just, you know, it's power. And I love, I love it. And being a leader as well is something that I've always had in me since I was young. So having that title is amazing, but also teaching other young ladies how to be leader as well. is like my number one thing. So, yeah. All right, my next question goes out to Mila. And as a multifaceted rap artist, how do you use your platform to express messages of empowerment and resilience? So I say that um, in my field, there's a lot of chase and validation from other, whether it be from labels, corporations, um, and really with my brand, with my platform, I kind of make it known that like I don't I don't ask for for my flowers or nor do I need anybody else to give me flowers because I've given them to myself a long time ago. So so honestly everything I do is out of pure enjoyment. It's not for recognition, it's not to be rewarded, it's not to be plastered up in front of millions of people. Um I've been able to you know, I'm an international rap uh, rap artist, so they're they're in Bahamas streaming my music, they're in Japan, they're in South Africa, and a lot of people still don't know about me because I don't have that major label push. But that's not that's not my why, you know, and that's not the focus. Like I've traveled the world and had so oh my god, I have so much fun. Like 
I'm having so much fun just living life and being creative, making music and, you know, sustaining myself. Um, it's funny because two years ago I left my corporate job. I used to be an engineer. Um, so, yeah, I was in the, I was in I was in the lab <laughs> and now I'm here introducing myself as a multifaceted rap artist. <laughs> So, you know, I just, I really had to um, believe in myself, you know, believe in myself and trust my, trust my, my body and my intuition and my guidance system. I really believe that um, we were all gifted with emotions that serve as our own guidance system. And when I feel negative emotion in a place or in an um, institution or in a room, you know, I feel like that's, that's, that's my cue. Like, you know, that's myself telling me like, okay. It's time to it's time to bounce. It's time to head out because we got other plans for you. You know, it's like that's like my, my higher self. We're like got kind of like God telling me like, okay, this is the situation for right now, but you're not gonna be in this lab forever because we got bigger goals and bigger dreams. <laughs> All right, Heidi, as a songwriter and artist, can you share how your creative process allows you to tap into the power of expression to convey meaningful narratives? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I spent, so I moved out to LA at 24, um, and I wanted to be the Latina Lauren Hill. I was like, I'm just like, the miseducation of Lauren Hill is like the best album because it it's not just amazing music, it's, it's spiritual, it's just, it's healing. Um, and so it made me believe in myself, and I moved, to, I moved out here, I knew two people, and, um, but I didn't, I hadn't really gotten to know myself very well. So I was writing songs about love, but I'd never really been in love before. Songs about heartbreak, and I had kind of experienced like a college heartbreak, but it wasn't like catastrophic, uh, you know, anything like what Taylor Swift writes about. So I was just like trying to kind of like, you know, <laughs> trying to like borrow experiences. And so I, I ended up writing for other artists, with other artists, and that kind of helped me to not really have to unpack anything for myself. And so I was writing through other people and pulling from their amazing adventures. Um, but then, like I said, I became a mom at 32, and it really challenged me and focused me to become the best version of myself, just trying to seek out, um, you know, just healing my, just from childhood, from just everything. And so then I started writing these songs about uh, reconnecting with my roots as a first-generation Latina, and about motherhood, and about being a woman in industries that really don't support woman, the voice of a woman. And um, these are, you know, these are not topics that you hear in the top 40 all the time. <laughs> and so, um, but I just felt like if I shared them, maybe they would resonate with other people. Maybe it's like, you know, some of the comments I get are like, oh, millennial core, which I had to Google what core means when you put it after a word. But I was like, I was like, okay, I get it. Some people say it's cringe and I get that too, but it's, um, but it's, I'm, you know, my music isn't for everyone. It's for people who resonate with it, who understand and hear my heart and, um, and who, you know, want mantras in the background when they cook dinner with their kids there. Or, you know, um, for women who are like, should I leave my corporate job, like my corporate job or the lab and like, you know, and are just having these thoughts and dreams that seem delusional, but then they're like, I, I'm meant for more. I'm going to go do it. And so just I literally just put songs together that are just mantras and empowerment um, lyrics that I needed to hear when I was like nursing and caring for a one-year-old during a pandemic and feeling like is this it for me is this where did my creativity go where did I go um, when I'm not sleeping and I'm exhausted and I was like you know and so I just I came back to myself and I said I'm not done I I think I'm just getting started. Uh, and so I created all of the rules. I, I don't go to music industry events because I don't need these men to validate what I'm doing um, as an artist or as a songwriter now. I don't, um, I don't s worry that people don't resonate with the music because I know how specific it is and I know that it's not for everyone and I'm okay with that because my peeper pleaser is dead. She's dead. <laughs> um, you know the uh, you know she's left the building, and so I can I can stand in my authenticity and say my music is 
if it's not for you, that's okay. And that in and of itself is so empowering and it makes me feel like I can express anything and I, I feel like I will find people who resonate with it because it's not this like, it is my experience, but it's not this like unique, I'm living on a, my own planet perspective. Um, I think we've all experienced, um, if it's not mom guilt, it's something else guilt. It's shame of some other kind. It's, um, you know, uh, perfectionism or um, setting boundaries. I mean, I've written songs about literally everything that I've ever been through at this point. And, and I just feel like if I, yeah, please do. If they, and I just feel like if I'm expressing from my heart and if you feel it, fantastic. If not, I hope you find music that does because I truly believe that what's um, no knocking the top 40 or reggaeton or any of the music that I love, like I truly love all of that music. How It's just um, it's a lot of what it, they sing about as a woman about to be 40 in a couple of years just doesn't resonate with me anymore. I'm in a happy marriage. I'm, um, you know, like it just so I don't have trust issues. I don't, you know, like I'm not uh, gonna leave him for the guy at the bar. Like, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm happy. And so, and so I just wanted music that, you know, resonates with me that I can play with my kids. And, uh, you know, so <laughs> the art of expression is just like playing by your own rules because I truly feel like it's so much more fun to just like be in your own lane and do your own thing with like the blasting your headphones and resonating with a few people who just like get you to your core and will literally just like ride or die with you then kind of being like somewhere over here and blend and blending in and being you know just like one of a hundred flavors that are just like it like um you know i i read something or somebody said something it was a lyric like an hour ago that was like um if I, oh it's justin timberlake lyric <laughs> It's like if I don't if I don't wake up and if I don't die wake up and 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 get to heaven I'm not in heaven it'll be one hell of a ride, and I was like that's what I that's what I want to do like I just want to if I don't like get a the accolades and the flowers like you said like I just wanted to be a hell of a ride because I did it my way and I did my yeah. thing you know so yes. all right. I don't know. It's <laughs> yes, my drop. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> All right. So, Day Run, um, as a violinist and musician, how do you infuse emotion and passion into your music to convey powerful messages? I think the most powerful message is unity, connectiveness. That we are all connected, and. Um, I, my first job uh, in Cuba, I was born in Cuba, my first job was uh, playing in the symphony orchestra, uh, the National Symphony Orchestra, and uh, I was there for four years, and every time that we would play a beautiful melody, I was feeling that, like, my whole body was feeling that when we were playing a waltz, I was, like, dancing, and then the director came to, to me and said, Dayden, are you going to dance, or you're part of the orchestra? And I was like, no, I am part of the orchestra, but I always, always would move was moved by by the music and and I couldn't stay still just playing like that I had to move and the other thing that it was a little bit uncomfortable for me was that I wasn't able to interpret my own music when I was in the symphony orchestra so we are as musicians from an orchestra part of the orchestra we are interpreting the music that the director is you know he's leading us to whatever emotion he's feeling and we have to follow that and I was like no I don't want these so uh, again, I'm from Cuba, and I, am, I was enjoying all of the Afro, Afro-Cuban rhythms, and, and, and that's what I was dancing when I was going home. And uh, um, I came to the United States in 2002. I started my, a new life here. And um, I started improvising on the violin and playing with Latin music and Latin, and listening to Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, and, and my passion always has been since I was playing before in the symphony orchestra, the beautiful melodies. Those beautiful melodies, Ella Fitzgerald and King Cole, those, I can, oh my goodness, I can say the whole day listening to those beautiful melodies. And, and also the rhythm is another thing that I love. So I was like, I'm doing my own music, I'm doing these. And then of course I have some covers too, but I enjoy very much um, mixing everything, different cultures in my music 
and uh, and delivering that uh, my own way with my own inter interpretation inter interpretation I'm sorry about my English it's like <laughs> it makes it stuff with the Spanish sometimes so <laughs> thank you so it, and then uniting all of that together and combining all of that in the beautiful beautiful mixture and just giving that to the audience so that they can understand somehow in their own way, mystical way, that we are all one, you know, in so many different ways we're all connected. So that's what I do through the music, connect different cultures, different people, different genres, everyone together, and, and then dance with all of that. And actually I have a show coming up too, this Sunday, so if you're not going to your show, please come to <laughs> or go to mine and to yours, whatever. So, so that's what we do when we perform live, you know, like, like all of that, giving all of that to, so we can inspire. That's what we do, inspiration. That's what we do, inspire. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So thank you for everyone sharing your voice so far. This has been an amazing, uh, amazing insights into life and expression. We're going to dive a little bit deeper um, and feel free to answer um, whoever wants to jump in and into this um, this next sort of question section. Um, so how do you perceive the role of power as a catalyst of transformation and progress, both on an individual level and within broader societal context? Open the floor. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, how do you perceive? <laughs> yeah, I'll wait on the third one, baby. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, oh wait, can you um, yeah. read it yeah. one more time? <laughs> yeah. How do you perceive uh, the role of power as a catalyst for transformation and progress, both on an individual level and within broader societal contexts? Um, I think power is absolutely the catalyst, more so recognizing your power, I would say, for an, um, in the, on an individual um, scope for me, because um, once you do recognize your power, then you are able to change and transform, um, yes, and, and get the outcome that, that you're looking for, because a lot of times we're looking for the different outcome, but we're the same individual. So when, <laughs> when you're the same person, you're going to get the same results. So um, it definitely comes with recognizing your power. And then as far as on a societal level, um, recognizing the power in others and um, connecting with people who also recognize their power um, that now you, you know, you can align with. And I think that a lot of times we, right off the bat, we see the negative in others rather than um, seeing the positive or looking for the positive. Um, and in every situation, it's like, we're going against something. Like, I, I'm like, every time I go on social media, it's a war against something. You know, someone's always fighting against something. And I wish there was more of, instead of fighting, more so adv advocating for what you do want, you know, because there's a lot of platforms out there and it's always, okay, well, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, but let's show people what's right. You know, let's highlight what is right let's highlight what is positive let's highlight who is doing good things um so yeah i'll just i'll leave it at that yeah i think that for yes i think that for transformation and progress too we need more uh creative minds in powerful positions uh guiding our society but more people that are creative that really can sense because i mean in my head Things can be so easy. I mean, why do we complicate things so much? So it's just like we need more people in powerful positions that are more creative, that can see more avenues. Like, like you know, like I, it would be so simple. Right? And you bouncing can off in. of that, yes, I'm going to say more good people um, <laughs> in power, you know, because it's, it's easy. to. There's a lot of people who are blindsided by the greed and the money and the fame and the this and the that. But if we have more intentional, creative beings, good people, um, you know, and, and there are, there, it exists. There are, you know, there's, we need more. We need more. <laughs> we need more, absolutely. I think it's, we, we need more that's willing to step up to the forefront and not being scared. Yeah. Or like, 
doing it and then kind of like it's like throwing your hand at, look, and hiding it, throwing a rock and hiding it right. kind of type of thing. So there's a lot of people like that as well. And just to touch on back, like having other powerful people with you, um, I think it's important the, the team that you have and the team that you surround yourself with, even if it's like personal or if when it comes to your craft and your job, because you don't want to look up and be the only one doing something or the only one that's trying to work for the future or work for the youth or whatever the case may be. You want to have the people that are there with you that wake up like, okay, I actually have a, a seventh month plan. I actually know what we're going to do for the next year. And, you know, so also having the women that I'm with all the time, they're called the council. I always say this. I'm like, it's such a refreshing feeling to have four, uh, five other women in my life that are on the same, like, level as me. Like, I can wake up and be like, hey, y'all, I just booked so-and-so. And other one's like, hey, I'm actually on Usher's residency. The other one's like, well, I'm on Beyonce's tour right now. The other one's like, well, I'm doing a residency. And the other one's doing a commercial. And we're all just lit. But we haven't seen each other in, like, seven months. But I know that everyone's doing their job, you know? So that's a beautiful feeling. And it also makes me want to wake up and do more. So it's definitely important to have other power people with you. What proactive steps do you take to assert your power in agency, particularly in environments where your voice may be marginalized or overlooked? I always think that we are um, being boxed in, um, especially women. And I think that's in every, um, every lane. Yeah, I don't think there's no one that I've never met anyone's like, yeah, I think it's every lane because they always think that we don't know better or we don't know more or like we have not been here before or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I just get confused sometimes. So I think it's a smart to go in a respectful way, making sure that you're standing 10 toes down and you are that leader and you are that person. Like, no, this is what I do. This is how I'm coming. And you can't really tell me no because I've, I'm doing it already. Mm. So how I'm already in the room. I'm in the room with you, actually. Okay. We're here together. Yeah. And I'm looking at you, looking at me like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, bouncing off of that, I will also say, I'm like, because I haven't, the last time I felt unheard was at my corporate job. So, the proactive steps that I took, I proactively stepped away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and I've been in a better position ever since. I feel like, you know, kind of same with you. I don't I don't make it out to a lot of the music industry events or networking parties or whatever because I, I feel like that would be putting myself in a situation where I would have to quote unquote assert. But I don't need to I don't need to assert. I really don't even need to be there. Um, especially with social media. I mean, the world is changing. We got social media now. Oh. Baby, I'm heard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I agree. I think it's um, the pro. I mean, pro proactive steps. It's like I think it takes a level of when I look back at versions of myself that moved to LA when I was sh she was 24. That went to. Uh, I mean, I did so many crazy things, and I look back even just putting my music up on social media, and and I'm like, what was she thinking? She's crazy. I, you know, and it's just like past versions of myself. And I, I, I try to keep that level of delusion um, and I hold tight to it. And I think that the, to resonate with what you guys, or to agree with what you all said, is that um, the people that I surround myself with are critical because going out there and deciding to step outside of your comfort zone and do something for yourself that just feel in your soul that if you don't do it, you'll just, you won't be the best ancestor to your, the people that you leave behind. You'll just like completely um, miss the mark. You just feel like that you have to do this it is incredibly, it's scary and it's really brave. And it comes with consequences if you don't have a community even when, if, when you do, but if you don't have a community to fall back on, people to support you to say, um, like, <laughs> what you said really resonated about like finding women who are also doing amazing things and who are not threatened by you, but who are like, yeah, she's on Beyonce, and yeah, she's on, and honestly, I started putting my music out um, a little over a year ago, and my friendships, even through the pandemic, as I was becoming a mom and really kind of challenging the conversations that I wanted to be in because I didn't want to cheese me, I didn't want to gossip, I didn't want to, like, I started really being like, wait, I'm, I'm, tr I'm raising a little, a young woman, you know, she's, she was a baby, but she's, she's going to grow up to be in circles where women are talking about each other. And I want, 
her to praise other women. I want her to speak highly, and so I have to be someone who does that. So my circles, my friendships, everything shifted, everything changed, and so you have to be prepared to really, um, and I think those are the, the steps, right, the proactive steps. Like, it's just to be prepared to really, uh, to have this affect your whole lifestyle, your whole life, right? Because you have to make room for people who align with the delusion, the crazy ideas that you have that you're just gonna go for, um, you know, and to support you. Because if they're like, mm, she's not gonna do it. Look, I'm watch her fall on her face. Like, that energy, is just so toxic and so unnecessary to have around you. And whether you believe it or you take it in or you uh, don't, you know, it's there. And you don't, you need to sweep it and just clean it and just bring in people who are um, really supportive and, and are going to make you think like, I mean, I told a friend of mine and um, I have this lullaby that I wrote that went massively viral, like over seven million views. It's been translated in tons of different languages. I want to make a children's book. I want it in like the uh, the national education system. Like I want kids to learn about it in school. And my friend was like, "That's not big enough." And she started coming up with all these other different ideas. And I was like, "These are the friendships that I always craved," but it took believing in myself to get to attract them. And so. Um, yeah, that's just my, the proactive steps, it's, they're, they're heavy, they're intense, yeah. they change a lot about your life, uh, but they're so critical and so worth it. Yeah. And also, uh, one more thing, yes, <laughs> and also one more thing, if we are ever overlooked, um, it doesn't matter, there's no other way to keep moving forward and keep doing what we are here to do as an artist, so. All right, so we've entered our, our closing uh, fill-in-the-blank question. And so uh, please help me finish this sentence and what speaks to you. Um, I will turn it over to Storm first. Fill-in-the-blank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Power can be used as a tool for um, inspiring others. Okay. We're going to go... Success. I want to say um, deliberate creation. Healing. Okay, and one last fill in the blank question. This time we'll go this way. Um, why not? Each speaker completes this statement. I am, I am claiming my power by healing. <laughs> <laughs> Doing what I want to do. By the grace of God and the universe. Dang, say it again. <laughs> y'all didn't, I'm like, yeah, I was finna, okay. <laughs> I'm claiming my power by. Um, I think this one's kind of personal, but um, crossing industry dance and street dance together. Mm. Yes. Thank you all so much for sharing your, your voice today and for having us um, on this important panel on expression. It's been a pleasure moderating. And uh, please do support World Woman Fund if you are not following them on Instagram and use the hashtag power uh, to claim your power and share your stories and stay connected with us. And without further ado, this is the power of expression. <laughs> <laughs>